Now for our story. Aunt Mary Lane and her old friend and helper, Lefty Larkin, were driving into Wakefield in the little pickup truck. Though the sun was bright and warm, there was quite a strong wind blowing, and fluffy white clouds were scudding across the blue sky. On some of the trees, the buds were beginning to swell now, and although Aunt Mary was grateful for the warmth of her winter coat, she was thinking to herself that spring was not far off. Now she turns to Lefty cheerfully, as she says. Well, Lefty, it won't be long now till you'll be putting in your garden, especially if this nice weather keeps up. Yeah, if it does, but it's still pretty early. Anyway, I'm going to get some of my stuff today, so I'll have it when I'm ready to go ahead. Mm, that's a good idea. I was talking to David Bowman the other day. He's sending to Chicago for some delphinium plants. Some special variety they have. <laughs> special variety, my eye. <laughs> ah, that won't do him any good. If I wanted to be a sissy, I could do that too. You watch me. I'll beat him in his own game with my own common or garden variety. <laughs> well, Lefty, I, I don't know. David's a pretty good gardener. He did very well last year, remember? His flower garden was the talk of the town. Oh, yeah? Well, mine was the talk of the county. <laughs> it was beautiful, Lefty. I'll never forget all those shades of blue. <laughs> Just took your breath away. Ah, you bet it did. And it's going to be better this year. Just you wait, Aunt Mary. We'll show David Bowman how to grow flowers. We? <laughs> Am I to be part of this flower feud between you and David? Whether I want to or not? Well, you've got some old school pride. Root for the home team. All right, Lefty, but you mustn't mind if I have a good word to say for David's side, too. I think you're both experts. <laughs> I ought to know better than to think you'd take sides against anyone who's a friend of yours. Even an old droop like David. David's a friend of yours, too, Lefty. You know that very well. Why, if I asked you to tell me what started all this foolishness between you two, I bet you couldn't tell me. Why, I... Well, maybe I can't. But I'm darn sure I was right. Oh, Lefty. <laughs> Did you, um, talk to Peggy at all this morning? No, I didn't. Why, Aunt Mary? I just wondered if she told you. You told me what? Has uh, something happened? Well... Bill Mead came out to the farm last night while I was at my meeting. Oh, Bill Mead, Bill Mead. Seems to me that guy's hanging around more and more lately. Why, no, he isn't, Lefty. He hasn't been out much at all. He usually only comes when he has a very good reason anyway. Well, for my money, there couldn't be a good reason for Bill Mead to be calling on Peggy. Lefty, uh, Bill's divorce comes up this week. Huh? Well, what if it does? I don't see that's anything for us to get excited about. Well, I don't know. Honestly, it makes my blood boil. The way everybody seems to go on thinking there's some connection between what Bill Mead does and Peggy. My gosh, that, that was all finished a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's a closed book. Perhaps. We'll see. Of course, uh, I confess, I wonder sometimes how Peggy does feel. But so far as Bill's concerned, it's far from settled what will happen. You see, uh, the divorce won't alter the other problem in his life. You mean the child? Yes. That's still going to be something Bill has to contend with. What happens to that baby? Well, it looks to me as if he won't have much to say about it. If Angus McGillop was right, didn't he say it was practically a sense that the court would award that baby to Kit Mead? Yes. I think Bill did say Angus told him that. But even so, Bill intends to fight for custody of that child. And you never know. Well, there's one thing I do know. Peggy'd never think of having anything to do with a child of kids. That's for sure. So if Bill did get the child, he'd be worse off with Peggy than he is right now. Not that it's important. She's engaged to Nicholas, so why should she bother her head about a wishy-washy guy like Bill? Now, Lefty, Bill's not wishy-washy. Not by any means. Of course, you're entitled to your own opinion, Lefty, but I must tell you that I don't agree. Bill's developed into a very fine young man. He's doing a good job there at the bank, and he's shown himself to be absolutely straightforward and honest 
in his handling of this situation with Kit. <laughs> well, we always come back to the same point, Aunt Mary. And every time we discuss Bill Mead, we just don't see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. So let's not talk about it anymore. And it's a darn nice day, and I hate to spoil it. <laughs> All right, Lefty, we won't talk about it anymore now. But I'm afraid that sooner or later, it may be necessary for us to reach an agreement. Because I feel a, a great deal depends on what happens to that child. And that's something we don't know yet. In a few more minutes, they reach town. Aunt Mary dropped Lefty off to go about his errands while she continued on to make the egg deliveries. A short while later, as she came out of a house on 11th Street near Ben Calvert's home, she met a dark-haired young woman in a neat white uniform slowly wheeling a perambulator. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I, I don't think you know me, but I'm acquainted with that young man you have there. I'm Mary Lane. Oh, yes, I've heard about you, Mrs. Lane. Everyone calls you Aunt Mary. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you're Miss Thorndyke, aren't you? Yes, but I'm surprised you know my name. Oh, Bill Mead told me about you. Oh, Mr. Mead. Yes, the baby and I were downtown in the square one day. He came along and we rather had a nice little chat. Yes, Bill, Bill told me about it. He was quite pleased with the way you were looking after this son of his. My goodness, he's grown a lot just since the last time I saw him. <laughs> yes, hasn't he? He's going to be quite a boy. Well, hello there, young man. <laughs> Oh. Look at that oh. grin, will you? <laughs> he really has a marvelous disposition. I've never taken care of a youngster who made less trouble. Well, that's mostly because he's healthy, I think. He has nothing to complain about. No. As you say, at this age, the most important thing is just plain comfort. Good food and so on. Mm. Sometimes I think babies are awfully lucky. No problems. It's a shame we can't remember our babyhood after we grow up. <laughs> well, perhaps we can't remember it. But it makes a lot of difference just the same what sort of babyhood we had. Yes, that's true, too. Mr. Mead and I talked about that. Did you? He, he seemed to be worried. Well, I know he's terribly fond of his son. Proud of him. Yes, he is. He seemed to be so interested in the baby's welfare. <laughs> Fathers are always so shy with their youngsters when they're little like this. I remember when Mr. Mead picked the baby up, he got the oddest expression on his face, as if he was almost afraid. <laughs> he probably was, a little, but I told him not to be. I could tell from the way he handled the child that he'd get on to it in no time. I mean, how to act around him. Some men just seem to have a knack that way. Mm -hmm. My husband was like that. He caught on very quickly. <laughs> Sometimes he could make our Randy stop crying when I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> you know, that child has the biggest, brownest eyes I think I've ever seen. Aren't they enormous, though? Mm. I told Mrs. Calvert the other day he's going to be a real heartbreaker when he grows up. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder. It's odd. I, I had the same feeling the first time I saw him. Those eyes, they... They remind me of someone. Oh, really? Couldn't be Mrs. Mead. They're not a bit like hers. No, no, they're... They're not like Bill's, either. Now, who do... Why, I know who it is now. No wonder it didn't occur to me before. <laughs> that can be so tantalizing, trying to remember. Yes, I know who it was. There was a young woman staying with us recently. And this baby's eyes are very much like hers. They are unusual, aren't they? Such dark brown. And then the way they slant a little... Yes, of course, that's it. The baby's eyes are exactly like Lisa Fenner's. Yes, Aunt Mary, the baby's eyes are like Lisa Fenner's, because Lisa is the child's mother. I wonder if Miss Thorndyke will remember that name, Lisa Fenner, the name of the young woman who showed such interest in Kit Mead's baby son when she stopped in at the Calvert home one afternoon a few weeks ago. If she does remember Aunt Mary, Miss Thorndyke might have some very interesting things to tell you. <laughs> 